Hey everybody, it is Iggy, and I'm here with yet another riveting tutorial. Well, it's not a tutorial per se, but it's more of a demonstration to kind of show you some of the features of Serpent Goddess and how to get the most out of this set. Um, there's some really cool features that the set does, so I wanted to go over them in a real-time environment to kind of demonstrate what it does, what it's capable of, and how you can maximize your purchase because it's so versatile. It will do so many different things. As you can see, I already have Poser open and I already have my outfit loaded. If you want to follow along with me, you can do so. Um, you're going to load this from your character folder and it would be in Serpent Goddess on your end. Obviously my end is a little bit different because uh, I developed it so I have a certain way of keeping folders that doesn't necessarily get put in the final version sort of thing. So your folder is going to say just Serpent Goddess. It's not going to have this little exclamation point thing in front of it. That's just to float it to my top so I have easy access while I'm making stuff. But anyway, um, if you back out of here, you'll also see that there's a clothing folder and a hair folder. So this is right in the Serpent Goddess. I'm going to cover the hair later though. First I'm going to do the outfit because the hair is its own entity so it kind of needs to be covered on its own. So to start off, um, the first thing that you're going to notice about this outfit is that it has snakes on it. In fact, that's the entire premise of the pack, snakes. It was just a good reason to play with snakes, which is what I usually do for March Madness. Uh, it's a tradition that uh, every time I release for March Madness, I make something that has snakes on it. Since this was for March Madness, it has snakes veritably all over it. Well, what makes this special is that these snakes actually morph. Uh, it was just a little added Easter egg or little, you know, nice little addition that kind of makes it able to be changed. So, as you can see in default, I have two snakes that are kind of coiled or strewn haphazardly across the bodice. And once you start to dial in these snake styles, which will be under snake style morphs, um, it's actually going to change the way that they sit on the bodice. Now you, you want to dial these in from the body actor because if you did it from the actual parts you would have to dial in multiple ones. This makes it easier. You only have to dial in one and it'll control the entire thing. So whenever you're dialing morphs you want to do this from the body actor of the item that you're actually morphing. It's just much easier. Okay, so to demonstrate how these snakes work, you can see that dialing in these morphs will actually change how they look on the bodice. It's just to kind of, you know, give it a little bit of a different look for your renders. Kind of make them come to life a little bit and make them real live entities, as it were. And there are five snake morphs on the bodice itself. When you come down here, the skirt has snake morphs as well. And these are going to be located under morphs and then style morphs. i close that. And then you'll see five styles here for the snakes as well. And it just it changes a little bit differently than the bodice does. Obviously, these snakes kind of sit different on the skirt than the bodice ones do, so they're a little bit different. But um, it's just a nice way that you can give the outfit a little bit more character, as if the snakes were alive. Okay, so now that I've covered those snakes. I'm going to cover the crown snake next because it too has a cobra. And this cobra doesn't have nearly as many styles, but it does have a few. The first one is 
flare hood. And what this is going to do is it's going to make the Cobra flare its hood. Then I have a Cobra reared morph, and this will actually make it kind of rear up like it's going to strike a little bit, kind of lean forward some. I have Cobra bigger, and this will actually scale the size of the Cobra up. So like if you have her way far back in the scene, but you want the Cobra to be a little bit more prominent, you can make it bigger. And then finally, I have Cobra bigger and reared. And this will actually make it bigger, but it'll rear it at the same time. So that, once again, if you have it far back in the scene, you can rear it and make it bigger at the same time. Um, you can probably use this to some degree together, but um, these morphs are done to the hair so that no poke is going to happen if you have the hair loaded, which I don't at the moment for obvious reasons. So I'm going to cover that in a little while. But um, so these make sure that basically you're not going to get poked through when you have the hair loaded. I mean, there might be some instances if you have like adjustment more styled in here where it could possibly poke through. But um, for the most part, they're designed together, so that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Okay, so now I've covered the snakes. Now I'm going to cover the skirt. Now, this initially, you'll notice, has body handles. And this is how you actually pose the skirt. Um, each side has its own body handle and it poses independently of the others so you can really kind of change it up to how you want it to be um, just to kind of give you like an example and you're gonna see some poke through does happen but I'm gonna show you how to combat that too there are a bunch of adjustment morphs and leg bending morphs and such that will help you pose it but I will get to that in due time but um with body handled skirts as much as I love them and I do it's never enough for me. Uh, I don't think that they pose very realistically, nor do they pose enough. So usually when I do a body handled skirt, I put movement morphs in. And this skirt is no exception. Only difference is this skirt actually has over 70 of them because I got so carried away. And you'll see that most of these are movements. Now, to explain a little bit, what you have here is a four piece skirt. You have a back, a right and a left, and you have the front sash. There are wind blow morphs, which is why they're called blow back, blow forward, and so forth, because they kind of Im imitate like the wind had picked the skirt up and tossed it, you know, so to speak. So when you start working with these morphs, you're going to notice that they look very windy, to give you an example like that. Um, this will actually extend the movement of the skirt. And since it is made up of four pieces, all the pieces have their own wind blow morphs. So there's about five backs and five lefts and five rights for the back skirt. Just to kind of show you how some of this works real quick. I'll uh, dial in a left. Ooh. And they all do different things, so you'll have to play with them and kind of get an, a look that you're kind of okay with or kind of liking. And you can see that the back skirt actually blows back, right, and left. It will not blow forward, however, and that is because if it did, it would go right through Vicky. So the logic of this is that the left side will only blow left, the right side will only blow right, but it will not blow into the figure. And uh, I'm going to show you how the left skirt works. Blow left, and it can blow back, and the right skirt can blow right, and it can blow back. You can also use these in combination with one another. How well it'll work will be highly dependent and 
that is dependent on luck, actually, because these weren't really designed to go together. Some of them do work together really nicely, while other, others will not work as nicely. They're kind of happy accidents type thing. So you can experiment and kind of dial in multiple morphs if you want, um, just to kind of test it out and, and, you know, get some really kind of cool combinations that might actually work together. Another thing, you can actually use the body handles along with the movement morphs. Again, how well that works will be highly dependent on the morphs and the combination, but um, just to, you know, kind of give you something to keep in mind when you're playing with this, you know, you can start combining things and, and see what you get. I actually did for my promos, in fact. Uh, I used a combination of just body handle poses to movement morphs to a combination of both things to really kind of show what it can do. But, you know, still pictures, they only convey so much. It's better to kind of do this in a real-time environment where everyone can actually see how it works and how to do it and so forth. So now we've covered the side pieces and the back piece. I'm going to show you that the sash actually also has wind blow morphs. You can blow it forward. You can blow it left. You can blow it right. Aside from the um, blow morphs that the sash has, you can also use easy pose. The sash itself is an easy posed item, so it makes it much easier to pose because it's ERC, which is basically extended remote control that controls the whole entire chain in one fell swoop. So you can easily get some nice movements just by dialing these oops dials in here. It's a quick and easy way to pose it if you're not wanting to pose the individual segments of the chain. But you can also pose the segments of the chain independently as well. Oops, I don't want more. Um, if you're feeling, you know, up to that. A lot of people don't like to pose things like that. So that's what makes easy pose so nice because it will actually let you um, pose it all at once rather than sit here and have to pose this perfect, like, you know. But, um... And you'll notice that these do have um, limits set on them. I mean, they will go back for obvious reasons, because if you bend this part up, oops, wrong way, and then you bend this part back, you, you can bend it back. But um, they do have limits on them just in case, you know, you should pose too far kind of thing. And that looks really blocky. So I'm not going to really demonstrate that. I mean, for me, I usually end up using the easy pose styles myself because it's just so much easier and and the chain bend is so much nicer and smoother. So you can use, you know, the easy pose or you can use the morphs. I do not recommend using the morphs and the easy pose and let me demonstrate why. they um, don't necessarily like to play well together. Oops. No, I don't want, I want the body. And see, as I just showed you, you want the um, body to be selected for this. Uh, you might be able to get some of them to play nicely together, but for the most part, the easy pose or the morphs themselves are more than enough to this, so I would highly recommend not using them together. So I'm going to go ahead and zero that. Um, beyond movement morphs and easy pose, of course, the skirt is also has other capabilities. Um, as I mentioned, if you run into poke through, there are a bunch of adjustment morphs, and this goes for all the pieces of the outfit. Whenever you run into any kind of poke through, you want to check the adjustment morphs, and I'm sure there's something there to combat it, because I am very careful about 
including adjustment morphs for nearly any situation. I can't say that they would work for every situation, but it should be pretty close. And of course there are fit morphs, um, which you would dial in, but this outfit is actually super conforming, so if you have morphs dialed in on the, the character, these will automatically dial in to match it. It's crosstalk. But that aside, um, this has what I call leg movement morphs, and this is an especially important morph set because it's going to help you kind of deal with the legs bending. Um, we're going to start off with the sit morph, and I'm going to turn on limits for this. Oh, they're already on. Um, basically, if you want her to sit, oops, wrong way. Um, you're gonna have her sit like that and say she's sitting on the ground and you want to bend her feet kind of forward-ish. And this is just for experiment purposes. I'm not trying to be careful here. Obviously you would be more careful if you were doing a scene, but just to show you what these do, that one will actually drape across her legs so that she can sit properly if she's sitting flat-footed. Um, the other morph, however, let me zero that, is if she's sitting with her legs bent. And just to show you how this works. If she's sitting in a chair, obviously her legs are going to be bent, so you would use this sit morph instead. And the skirt would drape properly. If you didn't have these morphs, it would be very precarious trying to make this skirt sit. And it's because it's a body handled skirt. It just doesn't have the capability to do that. So I always add in sit morphs where possible, you know, so that you can actually make the skirt sit. Because I know it is kind of frustrating when the skirt can't sit. So I try to make sure that I include that. But aside from sitting, this skirt can also combat other instances where you might incur poke through. For example, if you bend her leg backwards, just to show you how this works, there are other leg bend morphs that will combat that problem. As you can see, the leg back morph is kind of both legs because this is so thin, I could only do one. So this is for both of them. It'll control it for both. Um, let's see what else we got here. I have leg bend forward morph. Leg bend forward. And that will basically move the skirt out past the hip. And you want to dial this to one because it will be one. And you definitely want to have limits on for this because pa posing past limits, these morphs may not work as well. And you can see that it's still in the sash a little bit. But you can also use the easy pose dials to kind of move it out of the way, or you can select it and stuff, you know, just to get it out of the way. Zero the figure. Um, let me zero these morphs. But yeah, the leg morphs are really going to kind of help you tackle pokes through, any pokes through that you might incur, um, just so that, you know, you can use this in veritably any instance. Um, so I think that pretty much covers the morphs. Like I said, um, you can also, you know, pose it independently, or you can use the easy pose, or you can use the body handles, or the morphs, or a combination of all of those things. But it's uh, pretty versatile in the way that it works. So what else can the skirt do? Actually, it can do some other stuff, but it's material related. So I'm going to cover that now. And I'm going to jump over to my pose folder. Serpent Goddess clothing mats folder. And in here, you're going to see utility mats. Now, what these utility mats do is they turn off certain pieces to kind of make the set more versatile. 
Like say with these armlets, say you don't want the uh, right side to be on there. You just want the left side. So you can just hit this. Oops, I guess it wasn't selected. And then you can turn the right side off so that only this is left. You can also turn this one off and leave only the ring if you'd like. If you decide that you want them both back on, all you have to do is apply the mat and it'll all come back. These are just invisibility type things that turn them transparent so that they're not going to render in your scene kind of thing. So you can, you know, change how that works. But um, the armlets themselves are not nearly as versatile as the bodice and the skirt are, actually. The bodice and the skirt have way more that they can do. For one thing, you can turn the snakes off. Say you decide you don't want the snakes on. And you can see that there's shadow there, but that's just poser. Hold on one second. I'm just going to not enable shadows. You can see that, you know, the snakes are gone now. So if you want the snakes to be gone, you can apply that to that. The skirt, the crown, they all have snake off options. Uh, let me go and reapply this so that I can properly show what these utility mats do. And I'm going to start with the bodice, actually, and show what some of these do. Now, say you want to get rid of the abdomen. You can do that. Say you want it to be strapless. You can do that, too. And in fact, say you want it to be strapless with the abdomen on. You can do that by just turning the neck strap off and then you have, hold on and I'll demonstrate that real quick. You would have a strapless bodice sort of corset little thing going. So you can do a lot with this and turn these things off to kind of change the way that the outfit looks. But there is one more thing that you can do with this and this one's kind of a little bit Mm, we'll call it R-rated. Um, you can turn the bra cups off. Say, you know, you like to do naked Vicky in a temple with a sword type renders, but you don't, you, you think that this has got just too much clothes on it. So uh, what you can actually do is you can turn the bra cups off. You can make this a little bit more slinky and sexy. One thing that I will say, though, is that you're going to have to make adjustments for this. As you can see, you see the space in between. That is because, you know, the bodice is bigger than the breasts actually are. So you might actually have to, uh, there we go, adjust this to fit a little bit better, which is not a big deal just so that it accounts for this actual off option. So you can uh, kind of make some, you know, slinkier, sexier renders with this by turning that off. Um, but I'm going to turn it back on because uh, I don't want to stare at her boobs. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and zero those morphs. And I think that's pretty much all for the bodice options. Let me just double check. And I said you could turn off the snake, you can turn off the neck strap, you can turn off the abdomen and the bra cups. Now for the skirt. The skirt actually has a little bit more in it that it can do um, because it's just got more parts to do stuff in. This first one is for DS only, so if you're using Poser, you're going to ignore this. The fact is, the body handles are not going to render in Poser because they're set up in a certain way that, and let me just show you real quick. You don't need to use this mat off because they won't render. But in DS, you actually have to turn the body handles off to before you render, so that mat is only for DS. Anyway, um, going back, so um, this has a lot of different pieces. Uh, as I went through before, there are four pieces to the skirt. Actually, there's more than that, but we'll get to that in a minute. You can basically turn off most of these pieces. Let's start with the back. Um, 
if I can find it in this mess. Okay, skirt back cloth off. We'll turn the back piece off if I have it selected. I do not, so, okay, there we go. This will actually turn the back piece off and leave only the side cloths should you only want them to be in your scene. And there are actually adjustment morphs that will fix the panty so that it's a little bit tighter. It looks a little bit loose there to me, but you can use adjustment morphs to fix that. Um, let me go ahead and turn this back to square one. So you can have our hiney hanging out if you'd like. Um, and then you can also turn the side cloths off. Hold on. Let me get back to it and leave only the back skirt if you want. So you have that and then you have the loin cloth and stuff left. Um, this is going to be a lot of me pinging back and forth between the utility mats because I really want to demonstrate how they work and if I start turning everything off you'll be like oh but everything's off kind of thing and yeah. So anyway enough of my babbling. Um, if you want to turn the middle piece off because of the material zones that this has, which are actually pretty neat, you can even turn the middle piece off, which will veritably turn this into a series of ribbons, which is actually really cool when you use it in tandem with the movement morphs and stuff. It kind of makes it look like there are a bunch of ribbons that are just being flown about, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, I'm not going to go ahead and turn this back to normal, but you can even make this panty only. So if you want to just render the panties alone, you can do that. Um, I'm going to turn it back though. You can turn the front sash off, which is basically skirt one cloth off. So if you don't want that in your scene, you can turn that off, but you'll notice that it leaves that little accent piece. And that's because it's predominantly Egyptian and I think that it kind of adds something so I left that alone but um, for the most part you can really turn off a lot of pieces of this outfit and make it even more than it actually is and really change it up for all your scenes which just to kind of give you uh, more bang for your buck more options so that this doesn't rot in your runtime for the rest of its life after you render one picture. You can really just change it up and uh, kind of get a different feel out of it every time you use it. I'm going to turn that back to normal. If I had it, oh, I do have it selected. Never mind. Um, okay, so. I've covered the utility mats, and I covered the snake morphs, and I covered the skirt morphs. So, uh, just to go over one more thing, um, well, actually, probably a couple more things because I still have to do the hair yet. But um, there are extra textures available. If you bought this during a March Madness, you got them free, and that is called Guardians of the Dead. And basically, what that is is it's an add-on to give you extra textures. And I just kind of wanted to demonstrate that everything matches. So you've got Isis, basically, the goddess of magic. And you have Nephthys, who is the goddess of the dead. That's also Isis' sister. You have Newt, the goddess of the sky, who is the mother of the gods, basically, and goddesses. Which is kind of a teal. Um, you have Sekhmet, who is the right hand of Ra. She's the goddess of vengeance. And then you have Wadget, which is for whom this whole entire outfit was inspired by. Um, she's the cobra goddess. Um, and hence the cobras all over the outfit. So this one's really kind of special because it really kind of brings out the serpentine idea behind the whole thing. And there are textures for everything, so you can match the whole entire thing together. You know, you'll notice that the armlets have wadget, the crown has a wadget option, all of them across the board. So um, if you got this add-on, you have all these extra textures that you can also change your stuff up with. Um, 
now I'm going to kind of go over the hair. So I need to hop back to here and load my hair. And I'm probably going to want to change that bodice back just because it looks weird green and everything else is the different matte. And um, also, when you buy the main set, you actually get two textures with it. So there's Goddess of the Sun, which is the default, and then there's Goddess of the Moon, which is a black and silver option. But I'm just going to go ahead and load Goddess of the Sun now. So now we're going to cover the hair. <clears throat> this is a typical Egyptian styled it almost feels like a wig and and that would be because you know the ancient Egyptians wore wigs their actual hair was usually very short because they lived in the desert and it was really hot and you know there are other reasons why but for the most part they wore wigs these like elaborate wigs that had like jewels in them and, and this is no different this is um kind of a pigtail style wig and it actually has beads on the default texture you can kind of see them but they're not going to show up until I actually render so I'll just let that render real quick so you can see what I'm talking about And there you go. See, you can see that there's like gold beads on the front strands, kind of holding them together. And then there's the pigtail holders, so to speak, in the front <clears throat> that hold those together. Um, the piggy tails pose independently. So you're going to notice that when these load in default, they're actually through the pectoral there's two ways that you can fix that you can either pose it to work above it you know to kind of realign it so that it's not through the pectoral and there's also an adjustment morph that'll actually fit it to the bodice and pectoral automatically I'm gonna start you know pretending like uh, this pack is like you know cell phones there's an app for that well there's an adjustment morph for that <laughs> So um, basically, so you can really like pose these and get them out of the way if you need to. You can even pull them back um, if you need to. They work pretty good, actually. So, um, And then there's like a myriad of adjustment marks that will also help you with all this stuff. But uh, for the most part, you know, it's pretty easy hair to work with, actually. Um, so to go over how some of this stuff works, um, I'm going to just show you real quick. This has movement morphs with it too. Just to kind of make it a little bit wind blowy and stuff. And some of these will actually pose everything with it. so that it looks like it's kind of windblown and then there's windblown back morphs some of them change more than other things and then there's blow right morphs just to kind of give you a little bit more playroom with it um, also there's style morphs here to change the style of the hair you can make the bangs longer or you can hide them entirely. I've got just like a very, let me get rid of the crown so I can show you a very fine line of bangs here because um, I wanted to kind of mimic the way that it looks like if it were a wig kind of thing with shorter hair underneath it. So it's got like a very fine line of bangs that dangle down just peeking out of the crown type thing. To kind of look like she's got other hair underneath there um, but you can hide that altogether should you choose that you don't like it or you can make them even longer um, there's a way you can thicken the front thicken up these uh, piggy tails in the front and stuff 
The tails will morph longer, should you wish to make them longer. And so will the back. So you can make the hair like really long. And most of these should actually work with the movement morphs too, so just as a demonstrating scenario here. I'm going to show you how they kind of work pretty good together. Maybe not all of them, because that one looks like it might be, no, maybe not. You know, Poser likes to play tricks on you when you're using hair because it doesn't really show the hair as it should be in preview mode, so. But, um, zero this. So I can show you some of uh, the other morphs. Um, there's a back widen morph. So like if you want to widen the back, you can do that. And this will make the crown a little bit rounder and a little less lumpy, if that, you know, is your preference. And then there's a frame face morph, which you can see if you hold this straight, you can kind of see in between and you can see her ears. If you use the for frame, frame face morph, it'll close that gap off so that it's like more framing her face kind of thing. Um, so that pretty much covers the morph. So I don't want to show you everything because, you know, I want you guys to be able to play with it and experiment and stuff and find your own little things. But, uh, and like I said, there's a bunch of adjustment morphs here. Like I said, there's the fit bodice to pectoral, which will automatically fit it, you know, perfect if you're in a hurry and you want to just hit something and go kind of thing rather than post the pigtails on your own. Um, but yeah, you know, you can adjust the hairline. Uh, there is actually a fit Ico morph, which, you know, will make it fit Ico, but... Um, you can do a lot with this so and make it fit veritably almost anything except for the girl it won't fit the girl no matter what you do so don't even bother <laughs> but um okay so i'm going to cover the hair mats now this actually comes with a bunch of hair mats um and and these are different i have some plain ones in here which have four different colors and, and there's only four because blonde doesn't really work with egyptian stuff because there weren't a lot of blondes back then i mean i think i've read some instances where people had blonde wigs and stuff but for the most part arabic people tended to stick with darker colors so you've got basically black and then you have brown which will make the hair brown um, comic black, which is kind of a bluish black. I don't know why. I, I just always like to include like a comic black kind of color. Just because, you know, it's it's not as boring as just straight black. You know, it's got a little bit of color to it. And then we have red. Um, aside from plain mats, though, and let me just show you how this renders so that you can see they are indeed plain. And the red is kind of interesting. Some Egyptians did have re had red hair. Um, Ramesses actually had red hair. Um, the demon-headed god Set had red hair. So uh, red hair is actually not really an anomaly in Egypt. So I always make sure I include red hair just because it kind of goes with certain certain people. Anyway. Um, so you'll also notice that the beads, which is what it had in default, there's a bunch of them. There's one for each hair color, but in gold and silver, because obviously some of the clothing textures have silver metals and not gold. So <clears throat> you can make black and gold, which is the default, or you can make black and silver. You can make brown and gold and brown and silver. You can make comic black and gold and comic black and silver, and then you have red and gold and red and silver. The last couple of mats will change the ponytail holders right here because these have faience on them. So um, 
these were kind of important to kind of make separate, separate materials. And I'll get to that why actually in a minute. But um, basically you have Goddess of the Moon and Goddess of the Sun to match the outfit textures that actually come with the pack. It comes with two, like I said. And these just make it so that the hair matches the rest of the outfit. And once again, these come with the main pack. But then if you bought Guardians of the Dead, as I mentioned earlier, those have their own materials and the hair holders are no different. These will actually match Isis. Hers are Lapis. She has Lapis Fans. And Nephthys, who has Carnelian and Silver. Newt has just some kind of weird teal stone. I'm not sure what I would call it, but it's teal and it matches the rest of the outfit. Sekhmet is amber. And then we have Wadget, which is Chrysoprase um, and silver. So, um, you have to remember to load the hair holders. Um, my setup, like again, I said earlier that my setup is a little different. I have these split off, but if you buy Guardians of the Dead, it's all going to be right in the same folder, not like it is on my desktop. It was just separated to make it easier for me to pack stuff, but yeah, in the actual installation, it's all in one folder, so you won't have to go through all these multiple folders like I'm having to kind of thing. So, I mean, that pretty much covers the hair. Um, let me just go ahead and, because that's irking me, that's silver. I'm going to just go ahead and reload the default textures. Now, I'm going to show you how the staff works real quick. Because the staff is also important. Um, what you have here are V4 poses. And the first ten of them are kind of plain. They don't necessarily... It, use the staff. They're just kind of Egyptian-esque random poses. And once again, you'll have to use the adjustment morphs and the skirt morphs and stuff to kind of adjust for some of these poses. Or you can turn the skirt off entirely and just have her in her underwear. Either way. But, um, but these are just kind of plainer poses that uh, are supposed to kind of look Egyptian-esque. Um, and just to kind of show you one specific pose, if you own a crook and flail, this pose will work with that very nicely. And I would highly suggest Arian's Numinous. Um, it has a crook and flail in it, and it works really well with those because I use them for my promos. So if you have one, you can use it with this pose, and it'll give you a nice crook and flail type pose. But anyway, going back to the props that are actually in the pack, you'll see that there's a left hand and a right hand. And you'll notice that the poses, there are left hand poses and then there are right hand poses. The trick here is that you have to use the left hand staff with the left hand poses. And you'll see that they're labeled right here. You see it says left hand staff. These are going to require you to load the left hand staff. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick and I'm going to show you how that works not very well in default. And the second thing I'm going to do is make sure I have limits off because my poses go beyond limits. So if you have limits on, they're not going to work right. So you'll need to turn off limits whether you're in poser or DS. So left hand staff pose one or pose 11 rather, I'm sorry. Um, and you can see that you need to load the staff then click the pose for it to line properly. I'll just give you a couple of demonstrations here and how the poses work. Pose 13, way up in the air. If you have the left hand staff loaded and you click one of the right hand staff poses, it's not going to work. And I'm going to show you that it's not going to work. You can see it does not work right. That's because you need to delete that out and load the right hand. So, right hand staff. And that will correctly align it properly. 
Um, another thing to keep in mind is that if you're using this set in DS4, and only in DS4, when you use the poses, you're going to have to click Vicky, then use the pose, and then you're going to have to click the staff and use the pose. For whatever reason, DS4 only sees one object as, at a time. So it, when you click the pose on Vicky, it will not align the um, staff properly. In Poser, it works because the staff is actually part of the pose and it has its own settings in the pose to make it line perfectly the way that it's supposed to. But like I said, in DS, for whatever reason, it only sees one object at a time, so you actually have to click her and then load the pose. And then you'll have to click the staff and then load the pose again, kind of thing. Just something to keep in mind if you're a DS user. Um, also, the staff has its own mats that match everything as well. And you can see Goddess of the Sun matches Goddess of the Sun in, you know, mass. Um, if you're using Goddess of the Moon, naturally you would come over here and you would load the Goddess of the Moon staff. Like so. And again, Guardians of the Dead has the same thing going on with it. It has its own staff mats, so you have Isis, which will load the Isis textures, which are lapis and Nephthys and Sekhmet. I actually really like the Sekhmet one. I don't know why, I just really like the yellow. It's a really pretty contrast. Um, and so forth. Um, also, another thing you want to keep in mind is that if you're using the PZ2 mats and you don't have a figure in the scene, they may not work. It's because PZ2s do not work properly with um, Props. Yeah, that's the word that I'm going for. Um, so, I mean, if you have an actor in the scene, like Vicky, and it's parented to Vicky, it will work. As you can see, I'm already using them, and they do work. But if it's not parented to her for whatever reason, or if it's just kind of randomly in the scene, it may not work. I mean, they're real picky with the way that it works. So, I have actually included MC6 files which are over here in the MC6 folder, or the Materials folder, in the Serpent Goddess Staff Mats folders. Um, and these MC6s will work in any instance. So instead of using the PZ3s here, or the PZ2s rather here, and if you have issues, you can just come over here and use the MC6s, and they will always work. So just something to keep in mind. And uh, I'm going to render this real quick, just to kind of show you the special effects on the staff, you can see that the solar disk of Ra, that is actually what it, that is supposed to be, has some pretty cool effects. It's a little bit different in DS, obviously, because this is shader controlled. So in Poser, you're going to see what you obviously see in front of you right now. In DS, I had to kind of mess around with the textures a little bit and try to get it to kind of look similar-ish. It doesn't come close to exactly how this looks, but it has a little bit of the same kind of... Let me zoom in so you can really see the... And actually, I'm going to apply a darker texture so that you can see it really good. It's kind of got sparklies in it. It's kind of got these, like, whirling, swirling or be light things in it and stuff and the DS textures are I mean I try to get them the same and they do have a little bit of special effects and a little bit of sparkliness to them too but they're just a little bit different obviously you know going from poser to DS is tricky because I can't get a lot of the same exact effects that I would in poser using shaders but I try to get them as close as I can so um, just something to keep in mind. So um, that's pretty much, I think, most of what I wanted to cover in the outfit. I uh, can't think of anything else. But anyway, you know, just kind of experiment with it and, you know, have fun with it and 
and, and check out all the morphs and all the mats and all the utility mats and stuff that you can do with this set because it's really, really probably one of my more versatile ones and uh, you can really get a lot of use out of it just, you know, going back and forth between all the options and stuff. So that pretty much demonstrates everything that I wanted to cover today. So I hope you, you know, enjoy the set and have a lot of fun with it and I would love to see your renders so feel free to send them or post them in my commercial thread when I you know actually have it it's not March Madness yet I'm recording this beforehand but uh, when I have my thread up we'll see you there take care see you next time